What's up guys, it's me, Couch Mills here, and right now, there's a ton of characters that people assume are either low skill, or because of the meta and what is played in the meta, they're weak. And a lot of people think some of these characters are trash, so we're gonna talk about why they're actually not trash, and if you whip them out in the right situation, they can be overpowered. So we're gonna break it all down. But we're so close to 50,000 subscribers, and I'm trying to get there by the new year. Pretty optimistic, but if you can smash that subscribe, it'd be a sick Christmas present it and let's get right in now the first character is a character that some people just don't think is that great into the meta and they think that you always have to swap off of this character when your counters are picked and it's none other than winston winston went from being one of the most powerful characters in the game to supposedly incredibly weak because we're in a roadhog meta right winston can't possibly be a playable character in a roadhog meta or a meta where people are using reaper now, the first thing that you need to understand about Winston is in the tank matchup, Winston has a ton of really, really great matchups. Matchups like Zarya, Arissa, Ramatra. Winston wants to dive past these characters and dive the back line, basically ignoring what these characters really want to do, which is either poke or brawl. Winston isn't interested in doing that at all with these characters because he's literally avoiding them and surgically inserting himself into the enemy backline. Now, on top of that, any map that has a lot of verticality, so a lot of Koth maps like Ilios, for instance, oftentimes Winston can still be played even up against some counter picks like a Reaper or even a Roadhog. They have to make sure that you're pausing fully in between your bubble cooldowns. Sometimes you're going to need to use your bubbles to create space or apply pressure or kite back for your team. But oftentimes you're going to have an initial engage where you use a bubble where you bait out things like Suzu. And then you're going to have a follow-up engage when you get your bubble back to try to finish off an enemy target. On top of that, if you're engaging from far away from the Roadhog and making sure that you have your bubble, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to get hooked and it's not going to stop your dive. And against Reaper, as long as you make sure that you play much more passive passive when the reaper has fade and then more aggressively once the reaper doesn't these are some hypotheticals where you could still get value out of winston even up against counters but specifically having winston in your back pocket for the matchups where winston is really really great against and especially right now in the tank meta when there's a ton of counter picking going on if let's say you walk out of spawn as a roadhog and your opponent swaps to Arissa and shuts down your Roadhog. Now you could hypothetically force an Arissa mirror, but depending on what targets on the enemy team are diveable and what DPS are on your team that can dive, you might say, you know what, I don't want to engage in a brawl or poke battle. I would much rather surgically go in and try to dive the back line, and Winston's amazing for that. The next character that a lot of people just assume is low skill and trash and a character that you shouldn't really play is Torb. But there's a lot of things about Torb that you should know. First off, Torb has some of the highest win rates in the lower ranks. Underneath the Masters rank, Torb has a ridiculously high win rate. So if you're a DPS player and you want to have a cheat code character that is really, really good, especially with a character like Arissa just poking and applying tons of pressure, Torb is phenomenal at that. Now, in addition to that, being consistent at his primary fire actually takes a fair bit of skill. I know that a lot of people make the joke that Torb is a skillless character, but there is a ceiling if you can actually hit those headshots on your primary fire and properly balancing your abilities and making sure that you're never caught out in a situation where you get killed very easily. It's all really important on Torb and adds to his skill ceiling. I think Torb is one of the best DPS to play. Also, if you're like a tank player, hypothetically, and you want to play a DPS, Yes, but you don't want to play one that takes a ton of advanced knowledge to get good at and you don't want to play one that has really complex mechanics like Genji or Tracer. These would be DPS that you would have to invest a lot of time in, but Torb you can get pretty good at pretty quickly. So there's a lot of things about Torb that I think is really strong and you definitely shouldn't be sleeping on this dwarf. Now, the next character that people are really just underestimating right now, they're thinking that he's unplayable when in fact he is actually incredibly strong and it's Zen. Now, Zen's a character, as the game breaks down and people are kind of not doing what they're supposed to in the lower ranks, if you're really mechanically good at Zen, you can go make plays, you can outfrag a DPS, you can freaking go on a slight off angle or even a flank. Zen can kind of make his own rules, mainly because if you are like first contact with an enemy, you can delete them very, very quickly. And that's a powerful aspect about Zen. Now, you don't want to do this if you're dying and feeding and getting caught out. But more importantly than that, on Zen, the thing that is so strong about Zen in this meta right now is oftentimes we're seeing situations where everyone's one-shotting, right? People aren't on top of each other that often. People aren't diving all that often. People are poking with characters like Ramatra and characters like Sigma, or they're brawling with characters like Arissa. 
Or they're playing with one-shot characters like Roadhog. And in addition to that, we're seeing characters like Sojourn, characters like Cass, characters like Ash and Widowmaker all trying to get picks and do static damage from far distances. And Zen really plays into that perfectly. Not only can he get pickoffs on characters like Ash and characters like Widow, he can allow your other tank to diff the enemy tank because that Discord is so freaking powerful. And he adds a ton of damage pressure to the front line, which is a really, really big deal. Having a Zen on your team all the sudden means that you're going to be dumping out so much more damage than the enemy team. Like if you're in a poke battle, let's say a Sigma poke battle with the enemy team and the enemy has a Mora and you have a Zen, your Zen is going to be able to completely take over this battlefield because the amount of extra damage on your side is going to be so much more. So don't sleep on this character in the right composition. He's actually insane right now. Now, the next character that we got to talk about is actually Zarya. Another character that people are like, isn't she just dead? Isn't Zarya just unplayable? Well, actually, no. Zarya is actually really freaking strong in the right situation right now. And it really comes down to the fact that freaking Arissa has become like the best tank in the game because Arissa is so good at shutting down a Roadhog. But the thing about Zarya is Zarya is very, very good against Arissa. While Winston wants to jump over the Arissa, in the head to head matchup, Zarya wants wants to take the brawl with the Orisa, but Zarya, once she gets full charged and has her cooldowns, can basically just ignore everything the Orisa is doing and fry her. So if you don't want to mirror the Orisa and you just want to counter pick her instead, if you have a dive composition or characters that can dive or the enemy is diveable, you could play something like Winston and ignore the Orisa. Or if you have a team that wants to brawl more, then you can swap to Zarya and basically force that Orisa off because Zarya is so freaking good. And the great thing about it is if you go into a long fight as Zarya, right, and you go up against this Orisa and just completely shut her down, counter, and kill the Orisa, the other tank player is going to want to swap. So they're going to swap, but because you built up ult so fast and you get to carry your charge into the next fight, you're going to have ultimate to that next fight. So even if the enemy swaps something that counters you, let's say it's a Winston hyper they want to jump past you and they want to swap to something that counters you on Zarya you get to win that immediate next fight because you have an ult advantage and it's not like with other tanks where the other tanks would maybe be at 30 40 50 percent ult Zarya will be almost to grab assuming that you built up that high charge which is really easy to do against an Orisa so Zarya gets to basically snowball several fights in a row and then eventually you could swap off of Zarya but that's only after you dominated the enemy team for like three or four fights in a row which is insane for your economy and you're probably going to win that game. Now, the next character that people just think is trash, people are sleeping on, people are like, why the hell did you put that character in the S tier? And it's Echo. And I think that Echo just gets that bad rap because Echo's hard to play, maybe not the most popular character in the game for whatever reason, but Echo is so freaking strong. And here's the things that I would highly suggest you do on Echo. I want you to take aggressive off angles and poke out the enemy trying to whittle down resources like do damage bait out cooldowns and if there's an easy opportunity like an easy opportunity to get a beam kill go for it but don't go for anything too risky and use your fly as a form of retreation whether that's fade whether that's soju slide whatever it's like it's basically just how you get out of the fight so you're just poking from an aggressive angle and then you're getting out poking from an aggressive angle and you're getting out and you keep doing that over and over and over again and if that just continues you're going to build up an ultimate which is like an insane team fight winner you can copy their tank and it's freaking nuts you just win the fight just like that but the other aspect of this is there will be opportunities for you to just quickly pivot and follow up with a beam if an opponent jumps in and gets too low or if an opponent just gets out of position and is too aggressive or maybe there's a key moment where your teammates got a pick or your teammates got them really low you can go in and follow that up with beam but you get to choose that on your terms and then it's super easy to improve on echo from there because if you ever go for an aggressive play and it doesn't work out something goes wrong you die you feed because you went in and you tried to beam then you could just go back in the vod revisit that moment and say yeah i probably should have just did the poke cycle i probably didn't have a good enough reason to transition from this poke cycle of echo into the beam play and you don't have to make beam plays you could just keep poking backing up poking backing up poking backing up and you only go for these beam plays when there's a legitimate situation where you can get value and still survive because as long as you're alive you're there to punish enemies that are out of position and i promise there will be enemies that get out of position or you just build up that ultimate for free and you get to win the fight that way two things that are phenomenal on this character now the last but certainly not least hero on this list is actually mora and i know that i'm gonna get a little shit for this one specifically because we just talked about how zen is really great like in a poke composition versus a mora 
but I want to make it clear that when you're specifically in a rank that is like lower than the diamond rank or maybe lower than the platinum rank, Mora becomes a really, really great character that has the means to heal their team, find pick value against players that don't have the mechanical skill to keep you in check, especially if you incorporate stagger and sporadic movements, crouch spamming, left, right, rocking. Players underneath a certain level are just not going to be able to hit that, like Cass or freaking Widowmaker or Ash. You're going to be able to abuse these players, so you're going to potentially kill them if they get out of position. You're also a lot less susceptible to getting killed and dove, and it's really easy for you to basically stay alive in an environment where you have no peel because you have these movement abilities. Now, I don't want you to be playing this character as a crutch and playing this character as a way to not learn positioning fundamentals, mechanical fundamentals, and things like that, because it can be easy to just play this character all the time and put yourself in a situation where you're basically covering up the mistakes you're making positionally because this character has these unique abilities. But I will say that in certain situations, if you're just dying and you can't stay alive no matter what you do, your teammates aren't helping you, and you want a character that gives Gives you more agency about how and when you die more it could be a great flex pick to whip out on top of that you can keep up your team alive especially in a brawl composition so characters that want to brawl tanks that really really demand a lot of healing like zara and orissa you can get a lot of freaking value out of mora so i don't want you to sleep on this character completely even though i put the character quite low on the tier list keep in mind that there is a place for it and the character definitely is more powerful the lower in rank you go so sometimes you need that cheat code sometimes your teammates suck sometimes you get no peel and it's always a character that you should have it in your back pocket now, we are super close to 50,000 subscribers, and I really want to hit it, so please give me a Christmas subscribe, if you don't mind. And if you want private coaching, check out the Patreon. Or if you want to see me stream and talk coaching, you can check out my Twitch in the links down below. Thank you for coming by, and I'll see you next time.